What's your general market view right now? Um, thank you, Alicia. Good morning. Um, the market has you know, remained largely choppy, um, a lot of volatility inherent in the system. Um, obviously, on account of um, predominantly it's being weighed down by you know sentiments surrounding the elections and politics. Um, also, we've seen that there hasn't been a sustained demand. Um, people are willing to take profits, you know, a bit more, you know, quickly, quickly than you know was previously the case in the past. Well, we've had another deal announcement emerge out of the banking sector yesterday. Not entirely unexpected. Afri Invest signing a recapitalization agreement with the private equity consortium Vine Capital, and that making it the third rescued uh, lender to now announce a deal. Market reaction to that news? Uh, well, like you said, um, Afri Bank's um, you know, supposed to deal with uh, the private equity group Vine Capital had been in the works for quite a while. Um, it was pretty much in you know, public you know, purview. Um, there has very, been pretty much muted reaction to that piece of announcement. Um, I, I, think, I think the market is essentially waiting on you know, more specific information on the, you know, you know, surrounding these uh, you know, proposed transactions. Um, there are a lot of things also, uh, you know, dependents. Um, on, on the success of these deals, um, there are activities surrounding, you know, getting approvals from shareholders mm -hmm. and, you know, a, a lot of other regulators as well. Of course, uh, we, without the numbers, really hard to assess the value proposition here. But what do you see this, uh, you know, holistically spelling for the group moving forward, especially that we're looking at a private equity player coming on board here, like we've seen in the case with Union Bank? Um, yeah. I, I think, I think um, one of the key distinctives on, on this particular transaction is, you know, perhaps the um, management team that will be driving this initiative. Um, we understand that two of the key principals, you know, um, you know, that are part of the Vine Capital Group are, you know, previous bankers, um, you know, the, the head of which is, used to be a banker with um, Goldman Sachs in the U.S. Um, perhaps they will be bringing to, to, to the table um, significant international experience and exposure, particularly to the financial mm -hmm. services space. Um, and also, given the position that AfriBank used to occupy in the Nigerian banking sector, um, pretty much, you know, um, perhaps bodes well for, for the bank. Um, but like you said, uh, a lot still remains out there. The jury's still out, particularly on the fact that we haven't seen um, December 09 and December 2010 numbers for AfriBank specifically. So um, we, one can perhaps be able to infer um, you know, yeah. in terms of um, specifics, how that is going to play out. Well, it's that l exact lack of clarity and lack of detail that seems to be weighing on Access Bank as well. It dropped to a six-month low, shedding more than 3% in heavy trade yesterday. And that, as we know, this uh, company plans to tie up with Intercontinental Bank. What's your view on Access at the moment? Um, access, well, is essentially being punished um, along with the rest of the markets. It's a general trend. Um, we, still, we still think that there is significant value in access, you know, specifically um, in our view. Um, the proposed tie-up with Intercontinental Bank is one that will significantly boost the bank's capacity, um, specific, especially when you look at it from a retail banking perspective, where the bank is not um, traditionally known to be pretty strong. Um, access, bank is a, access is a bank that you know, has um, significant strengths in the corporate and institutional banking network. Um, you know, pretty you know, decent loan book if you look at it from a uh, quality of credit you know, perspective. Um, the bank is looking to obviously expand on its scale and distribution and in, you know, in order to be positioned to challenge the top tier banks as is. So that um, tie up mm. obviously lends some you know, very potential the positive synergies. Uh, overarching all of that activity, we've seen uh, Nigeria Central Bank saying yesterday that it would target non-performing loan ratio of 5% across the banking sector after the state bank Amcon absorbed lenders' existing bad loans. Uh, what have you made of that and how realistic a target has been set here? Um, I, I think first things first, it's important to note that uh, this is obviously... Um, this gives color to the fact that the central bank is currently being led by a former risk manager. Um, quite clearly, the focus by the CBN has been to ensure that MPLs are kept at various minimum. Um, I'm not sure there has been a precedent set before where um, the central bank targets a specific MPL ratio for its banking industry. Um, but perhaps it, it is a good thing anyway, um, all taken in. Um, even though there are potential in, you know, um, scenarios that could play out. Um, one. Uh, we could find the Nigerian banks become, you know, or continue on the path of, you know, um, significant risk aversion that has, you know, been the case he heretofore, um, meaning that they would obviously not lend as aggressively as, you know, the economy and business needs, you know, may arise. Or in the scenario where 
um, some banks take the other extreme view, which is to become a bit more reckless, recognizing the fact that there is um, a, a body, in this case Amcon, who would in any case buy off whatever uh, excess NPLs there are above the 5% threshold. Um, but then again, it's all left to, yeah. to, to see how that plays out.